Ottoman army in uh, World War I, in the Great War. And um, after him, my father was born in 1941, shortly after the Farouk. So he was born in July, just a couple of months after it. And within two years, the family had fled westbound across the desert and to Jerusalem. I never knew my grandfather, but I knew from my father that he was a real fan of excited two years ago when I had seen the film that just came out called On the Banks of the Tigris, um, documenting the history of this Iraqi music and its roots in the Jewish community in Baghdad. And so um, after watching the film, I, I raised to get on the phone and tell my father about it. And he said, uh, interesting, actually uh, the al Kuwaiti brothers played in my bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that was my first reaction. Um, it was a wow moment, um, but it was also simultaneously uh, wonderful to feel this connection with the history and with my family's connection to the land, uh, while also being strangely disappointing, or I wasn't quite sure how to feel about the fact that I was just learning about this for the first time. So um, I guess with that in mind, I should say, first of all, some thanks. Um, for anyone in the audience who is uh, maybe not from a Sephardi or Mizrahi background, who might not be Jewish necessarily, or who might be Ashkenazi, and you might find yourself wondering to yourself, um, am I in the right place tonight? I want to tell you, you absolutely are, and thank you for being here. And, um, you know, it, it is incumbent upon, I think, all of us, out of um, an intellectual honesty imperative, to remember um, the history. And it's also uh, the emotional connection, certainly, that all Jews um, must feel to uh, remember our ancestors. And so I want to thank you all for being here. And for the Sephardi or Mizrahi uh, Jews in the audience tonight, which I think is everybody else, <laughs> uh, I hope that this helps just a little bit of um, you finding your voice. These stories are not only something that lived in the past, but they're also um, here uh, to be shared with everyone. Our audience is everyone. And by the way, I should have said at the outset, if you don't want to listen to everything I'm saying, as long as you take one of these from me uh, at the end of the night, we're okay. As far as Jemena, very quickly, Jemena stands for Jews Indigenous to the Middle East and North Africa. And what we do is uh, many different things. Some of it, uh, actually the, the origins were in oral history video uh, testimony recording. I'll just give you one data point. Um, the uh, survivors of the Holocaust in Europe have had roughly 52,000, maybe up to 55,000 um, stories recorded. Out of the 856,000 refugees, former refugees from the Arab lands, from Jewish background, and one million when you include those from Iran, maybe we're up to 1,000. So there is really a race against time to report these stories and um, not just share them you know, at our Shabbat table and uh, maybe with grandkids or nephews or nieces who don't want to hear them one more time. Uh, other than that, we've just announced a partnership with Betat Futsot in Israel, which has just uh, launched an app to make the oral history recording a lot easier. Uh, it's in Hebrew now, it'll be in English next year. And beside that, we have a, an Arabic outreach program which reaches um, hundreds of thousands every month in Arabic, both on Facebook and on our website. And we're also developing educational curricula for schools. So many different things. I urge you to be in touch. And again, feel free to just grab one of these for me at the end of the night. And thank you again.